Could the message of Jesus have been changed by his own disciples? Hey, welcome everybody to our series with Don Stewart. And we are looking at, listen, how can I share my faith with others? Why do I believe what I believe? Uh, knowing what I believe and uh, this is exciting because we're going to look at some more topics today, some more questions. And uh, Don, welcome. Great doing this program with you. Thanks for asking me, Tom. It's a pleasure doing it. I appreciate being asked. Oh, this is terrific. And, there, you know, these are things, we're able to talk about things that people need to know. The, the Christian needs to know to strengthen their faith because they're not getting it in most churches. And non-believers want to know, you know, what does, what does the Bible really say? How do I know Jesus is who these crazy Christians say he is? And, and we're able to, to work through these things and answer questions. And for me, it's quite, uh, it's quite nice to be able to do something like this and put some real meat to the bones. Mm. So I've got some questions for you. So if you're ready, we'll roll. Let's do it. All right. First question is, could the message of Jesus have been changed by his own disciples? You know, Tom, that's a question that often comes up by unbelievers, and here's the reason why. They don't want to face the claims of Jesus Christ, because if you read the Gospels, what do you see? Claiming to be the one way to get to the one God, promises eternal life to those who believe in him. If you don't believe in him, John 3, 36, you won't see life, but the wrath of God abides on you. In other words, he makes it very clear, the way, the truth, and the life, nobody comes to the Father but by him. That is very special. And so what unbelievers, many of them try to do is say, well, Jesus never said that. What happened was after he died, his disciples really missed him. They started telling the story over and over again, and they exaggerated the story. They, they exaggerated and made him out to be God the Son, made him a miracle worker, this and that. And uh, that's why we don't really have to pay attention to it. And some actually claim there's some type of conspiracy going on. The uh, you know the message well, was changed because of uh, you know the disciple for whatever reason. Now, uh, could the message have been changed? No. There's so many reasons why not, and we deal with it. By the way, again, this is in our book. Uh, did Jesus exist? Are the records about him reliable? From educatingourworld.com, it's totally free. Free download for all. The Everything's free. We we do. We never charge for anything. It's under the subject of uh, Jesus. All right. First of all, the period of oral transmission was short. The first book in the New Testament was written within 20, about 20 years, within 20 years, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so legends take about two full generations to develop. You've got, you know, if you're within 20 years, you've got eyewitnesses that are still around at the time. And remember, Tom, the um, the Bible says in the first letter from Paul, 1 Thessalonians, written within 20 years of the resurrection of Christ, he said, have this letter, letter read out loud. So they were reading out loud publicly. They weren't ashamed of what they were doing. Plus, again, uh, the people, remember, lived in a memory culture. They would memorize uh, the ra uh, famous rabbis. Their sayings would be memorized. And the key is they tell the same story. They tell the same story. And also, an another point, a last point, they deal honestly with the facts. If you were making up a story like this, you would you would have Jesus appear, you know, to first to Peter and then maybe a John, and you would have them, you know, have the appearances, you know, highlighted there you got appearing to women two different groups of women and uh, yeah, in other words they were the first witness you wouldn't make a story like that up so in other words there's really no reason whatsoever to believe that uh, jesus disciples made up this story that he didn't really say these things it was exaggerated by his well-meaning disciples just doesn't work uh, great wonderful thank you don and by the way again i know don mentioned it but uh, you can check out everything that don has all of his books, 66 books now, and counting at educatingourworld.com. You can download all of the things that we talk about and a whole lot more for free at educatingourworld.com. And uh, these questions today are coming from, uh, did Jesus exist? And also, before we continue on, I want to uh, listen, just ask if you would uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet. And also, Hit the notifications so you can be alerted whenever we have new videos that come up. It helps us to be able to get the word out there to do both of those things. And they're both free. To subscribe and get notified is free. And you can share it with your friends too. Uh, so Don, next question is, uh, could the church have conspired to hide the real message of Jesus? 
Uh, and then, of course, we think of, uh, remember the book and the movie from several years ago, I think Tom Hanks was in the movie, The, the Da Vinci Code, the big conspiracy about Jesus. Yeah, it's interesting. Every, every few years, a book comes out. Uh, there was a book in 1982 called Holy Blood, Holy Grail. It became a bestseller, basically a detailed a conspiracy that Jesus was supposedly fathering a child through Mary Magdalene, and uh, the child fled to France, and uh, you know his descendants became uh, part of the uh, a dynasty there, and and so you got something like that. Then the, then of course the nonsensical Da Vinci Code comes out, the fictional story, and they all have one thing in common: they they reject the first, and here's the key, Tom: they reject the first-hand evidence, the primary source testimony of the New Testament writers. The people who were there, they wrote as either eyewitnesses or recorded eyewitness testimony. And these conspiracy theories just have no basis in facts whatsoever. Because let's remember, according to Luke 24, 11, the first unbelievers of Jesus' resurrection were the disciples themselves. When the women came and said, you know, he's alive, um, you know, they'd seen him on, on Easter Sunday. And so what we have in the four Gospels are four different writers writing from four different perspectives, but telling the same basic story. And then you've got the church, you know, again, uh, on Pentecost, Peter, and think about this, Tom, 50 days later, after Jesus was crucified in the city, Peter stands up in front of an audience of people, and he says, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Uh, you know, he, and he, he said, he's a man that did mighty, mirac many miraculous works. Uh, Acts 2.22, and he said this, just as you yourselves know. In other words, you know, I don't, I don't only know he did miracles, you know that too. Now, the fact he said that Jesus, you know, came back from the dead, Tom, uh, you could have someone walk over during Peter's talk to the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, and they, if the body was still there, they could have moved the stone and said, wait, sorry, he's, he's here. But see, Christianity would have died in the womb, would even have gotten to the cradle. But the fact they said it right there, where the eyewitnesses were, tells you something. They didn't go off to Rome or Athens right there. In other words, they knew it was true, and they had no problem proclaiming it there. And so you get these crazy things come up, like I said, every generation or so, these books, they become bestsellers, and then they become part, you know, then you put them in the circular file because they're you know, part of history because, uh, you know, just a little blip on the radar screen. So we've seen him before, and I'm sure we'll see him again. But now uh, the Holy Blood, Holy Grail, Da Vinci Code, books like that, they, that's been going on for centuries, and they don't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Well, there's another one out, uh, another thing that's out there, and it's been out there mm -hmm. for a long time. It's called The Gospel of Thomas. What is The Gospel of Thomas? Yeah, well, the Gospel of Thomas is actually a Gnostic work. It's about 20 sayings of Jesus that were written supposedly by Thomas, but they weren't written by Thomas. They're written after the time of the New Testament. But they're Gnostic sayings, meaning they've got all this hidden meaning and stuff. In fact, uh, there's some very they're very weird, too. They're very weird. They've got Jesus saying something to the effect that uh, to, for a woman to be saved, you got to become a man and to reach salvation. You and what they are, there's no. What's interesting about them is that there's no background of. They're just saying supposedly from Jesus. In other words, every saying we have in the New Testament about Jesus from Jesus, except Acts twenty thirty five, where Paul quotes a saying we don't have in the four Gospels. There's always a background. We're always told he's on the Sea of Galilee. He's talking before you know uh, Pontius Pilate. He's talking you know. The Sermon on the Mount. There's always a historical background. These are just like 120 sayings. They're just out and out weird. And so it's not, again, not firsthand information. It's not written by Thomas. And we have a, a section on that in our book also, too. We talk about the Gospel of Thomas and how, you know, it's these fanciful sayings that are attributed to Jesus. Because one of the things that took place, Tom, is that um, Jesus, you know, there a couple things. Remember, you, he's, he shows up at age 12 with his family. They go into the temple. And uh, well, he goes to the temple and the family started going back to Nazareth. They find him confounding the elders there. And um, after that, there's nothing till the public ministry begins. And so what people did, they would fill in the years the fanci with fanciful stories. And this was real common to do with supposedly, uh, you know, statements of Jesus, deeds of Jesus. But the only place we can really trust is the New Testament. And that's where we have to go to. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, there's so many different bizarre things that are out there. There's another one called the Secret Gospel of Mark. Yeah. What, what, what is that? You know, I what mean, the Gospel of Thomas, a lot of people have heard about that. Uh, they believed it. But what is the Secret Gospel of Mark? Well, this is a real interesting one. The Secret Gospel of Mark was actually um, a, a 
supposedly uh, a book that was written or a, a gospel written by Mark, well, by, by Mark, but it turned out to be a, a total fraud. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, the person that promoted that, I uh, won't even mention his name, is a professor at Columbia University, and he, he made a big proclamation of this that you know we found this and again they all have in common they promote a different jesus either a gnostic jesus or jesus doing some crazy stuff or whatever it might be and so what happened was this you know it gained a lot of notoriety for a short period of time but then it's okay produce it <laughs> it was never produced they never so that kind of that kind of killed that so um we that's sort of the the things we run into so we have to you know what we have to do is you have to deal with all these you know deal with these accounts that come out and and you but again this it's like one scholar said these writings were junk then they're junk now it's not we don't know about them it's just that uh you know no one took them seriously and with respect to the secret gospel of mark that was something no one heard of no one knew about and it turns out never existed so uh um, that's another problem okay so i'm going to throw uh a, a, this is kind of off topic but on topic sure. i guess sure. um, when you look at the writings of the apocrypha uh, right. you have um historical accounts the catholic bible includes those books um, what's different about them compared to like the gospel of thomas the secret gospel of mark and so forth yet at the same time they're not considered part of the canon uh, what's 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 the uh, you know, thing with the yeah. apocrypha it's a good question. The Old Testament Apocrypha consists of 14 or 15 books that were written between the Testaments that uh, were never believed to be authoritative by the Jews, not and uh, Roman Catholic Church, basically, at the beginning. There's a long story about that. Put them in, uh, wasn't until, uh, you know, the Council of Trent, where they met, because Martin Luther brought up a bunch of things during the Protestant Reformation, the pra practices that were there that were contradictions in the Bible. And so they pulled out these books and say, well, this is the second canon, the Deuterocanon, but this is actually authoritative works. And so uh, I've actually got a whole book on the subject, uh, you know, a, a couple of them actually deal with the Apocrypha, New Testament Apocrypha. Apocrypha means hidden, Old Testament Apocrypha. Those are the 14 or 15 books that are accepted by the Roman Catholics, but rejected by the Protestants and rejected by the Jews. Uh, all the books in the New Testament, Tom, um, basically without exception, are quoted or at least alluded to in the New Testament, of, you know, that's being canonical, as being divinely inspired. Not one of the apocryphal books are ever quoted as being a divinely inspired of God. And so um, Jesus, and here's, here's a really interesting one, too, to think about, the argument I always use. In John 5, 39, Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify of me. Well, the religious leaders, you know, if they would always confront him when he said something that was, that was you know, wrong or something controversial. They never confronted him when he said, search the scriptures, because they had the same scriptures at that time. We know exactly what they were. And so they weren't talking about different holy books when, with respect to the Old Testament. But see, these are different books, the Old Testament Apocrypha, that don't belong in the Old Testament. They were written... Uh, uh, by you know um, the people who the wisdom of Solomon wasn't written by Solomon. Uh, you've got other books that are just highly questionable. You've got books as we we deal with that have unbiblical theology. The Book of Judith, uh, you know, uh, you've got God assisting Judith and telling a lie in the Book of Judith. You got historical errors in these other books, uh, Book of Tobit and, and things like that. And again, we we have a couple books under the subject of the Bible where we deal with all this: the Old Testament apocrypha, the New Testament apocrypha, as any books been left out of the bible so i got quite an array of books and again they're all free downloads on educatingourworld.com oh, that is great i was going to ask you what's the name of your book or books uh regarding the apocrypha so people can get can access them yeah uh, it's yeah are the right books in the new testament i'm doing this from memory are the right books in the old testament uh i could look it up here if you want me to but it's, you go down it's kind of obvious because i've got about a dozen books on the side it's under the subject of the bible and again, uh, do we have the right books in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament? And we have to talk about the Apocrypha. So I think there's three or four of them that I, I go into quite a bit of detail on. So they're there. And what you ought to do is download all of them. They're all free. And then you can look f through and um, see which ones you like and which ones you want to read and, and the such like. You have, uh, are the right books in the Old Testament is yep. one of them. Uh, another one is, does the Old Testament Apocrypha belong in the Bible? Yep. And um, uh, just great, just great great resource. Uh, you know, the book of Enoch comes up a lot yeah. in Bible prophecy circles, and you know, <laughs> that's yeah. kind of the, the world I 
deal with. And it's yeah, and people will use that and they'll pu- they almost pull out things in a sense that all, it's almost like Nostradamus. It's like, well, we have this prediction here. And, and I think they even may make it mean things that whoever wrote the Book of Enoch wasn't trying to write. I don't know. It it's, it's gets into this very strange uh, interpretations of events that are coming. Yeah, the Book of Enoch is not the Apocrypha. It's, it's a, book, a group of books called the Pseudepigrapha. That's a word, fancy word for forgeries. It wasn't written by Enoch. It was written between the Testaments. Remember, there was a 400-year period between the Testaments when God didn't give any divine revelation. And that didn't keep people from writing. They wrote a lot of historical novels. And Enoch was an interesting character. According to Genesis 5, he lived 365 years and he disappeared. So they made him the star of the show. And they got uh, things about Enoch and the flood, um, all this nonsense. Again, they made these things up. That's actually where it seems the uh, the whole idea that the sons of God in Genesis 6 were, were fallen angels, because that's what uh, Enoch promotes, or the book of Enoch promotes one Enoch. It was actually about four or five different books of Enoch put together. It wasn't just one there. But uh, that's where that came came from. Between the Testaments, there's, as we've talked about before, and we're, or we'll talk about, I imagine, in the future, there's no biblical basis for that whatsoever, uh, that that belief system, but it came from this, uh, this pseudepigraphal, this forgery. Enoch wasn't around at that time. He'd been taken to heaven before the flood, so he certainly didn't write something between the Testaments. Okay. That might be a good, uh, uh, just a good program in and of itself for you and I to do sometime in the in the not too distant future. Looking forward to it. Oh, great, Don. Thank you for your time today. We're already out of time. We didn't get through all of our questions, but uh, we always have next week. Uh, again, you can access Don. You can. Visit his website, I encourage you to, educatingourworld.com. Just tons of topics there, 66 books, all free, downloadable. Uh, Go over there and be well-educated, and you're going to be blessed. And also, I want to ask you again, if you would, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and also hit the notifications, and be sure to share these things, too, if you like them. Uh, God bless you guys. See you next time.